Just a quick little video about the uh, CNC plasma cutter uh, that I've built. Uh, this is the machine itself. There's two rails on each side here, one on each side. The cross beam that's all aluminum gantry. It's all kind of rigged up right now just to get things working and then I'm slowly improving things as I go. This is actually the second uh, revision on it. Uh, let's see, there's, I'm using a Hypertherm PowerMax 3A. That's uh, their smallest manual plasma cutter I've hacked into it to allow it to be turned on and off by the computer and also to bring out torch voltage, which goes to this multimeter at the moment. I'm working on torch voltage control or torch height control using voltage. It's all controlled by uh, what's called Mach 3 CNC control software on a little PC. Uh, just an old gateway I got for free from a previous tenant. Um, the hardware itself is under here. There's a couple of stepper drives here. There's a black box in the corner from Radio Shack that I use to get all the wires going to the right places. And a homemade high, higher voltage uh, power supply. Uh, there's also a PC power supply involved back there. I'm cutting a small block Chevy tone ring part, if you know what that is. And Oh yeah, I just recently rigged up an air evacuation system. Under the table here, it's just a couple furnace filters and it's got a squirrel cage fan from a house furnace or an apartment furnace in there and a tube that just heads on out. Alright, I'm getting my welding helmet on. Double checking that I've got a ground clamp. My uh, torch height is set properly. I'm at zero point, everything looks okay. The torque plasma machine's on, the air compressor's up, pressure's good on the plasma indicator. Uh, I'm just gonna click start on the screen here. there. <clears throat> These didn't quite drop out, but I'll punch them out here in a second. I'm going to let the air compressor stop and then I'll resume. Okay, I popped the, uh, the um, pieces away that aren't desired. And you can see at this point there's still a fair amount of dross on the edges. Some of it's falling off. Uh, this stuff's really brittle, so like we'll take, I don't know if you can see that, but we'll take this stuff. There we go. I'll take that for instance. And I'll just tap this on the floor a couple of times. And as you can see, that pretty much gets rid of it. So that's generally my procedure at the moment. Let's see. Here, look at the teeth. Put all that stuff on the teeth there. So generally, I'll just tap it on the floor. Whatever edge you can tap it on gets rid of what's on that edge and a lot of times stuff that's in the surrounding areas. And then whatever's left, I tap it with a wrench or something like that to pop it off. Sometimes I just put them in a cardboard box, a whole bunch of parts, like if I'm making a bunch of something in particular, put them in a cardboard box, especially with smaller pieces. I make these little quarter inch thick squares as part of my calibration for the machine. I always end up with little piles of them around, so I'll... Uh, I'll put a pile of those in a box with a couple of these and I'll shake the box around a little bit and that'll knock them all off in fairly short order. Actually, I've been thinking about building a machine to do that.